Hi guys, it's me Chazar HD and welcome to the incident analysis video for the 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix race that of course was absolutely epic, especially at the end of the Grand Prix. Now I know you guys normally are used to a race watch along and race review for every Grand Prix instead of a qualifying review and then the incident analysis, uh, what basically a day later. I will get into at the end of this video the situation as to when I am eventually going to do a race review. As you guys know, my internet situation is still ongoing, and I will get into that a bit more towards the end of this video. But first, let's analyse the key incidents and how the race really unfolded in Sao Paulo. Now, before we get into crashes and stuff like that, let's first look at really how Max Verstappen won the Brazilian Grand Prix, because... Even though he did have, without a doubt, the best pace in the Grand Prix, you cannot doubt he had to work for the race victory by passing Lewis Hamilton not once, but twice. Now, I just want to prove two things in showing the first overtake by Max Verstappen on Lewis Hamilton right after the first round of pit stops. As you can see here, Lewis Hamilton has just passed Charles Leclerc, and so has Max Verstappen. Now, at this point, on the exit of Jun Sao, the real final corner of the track. Max is not miles behind Lewis Hamilton, but he's not really, you would have thought, close enough to really go for a move down into turn one. But the straight line speed of the Honda Power Unit during the Brazilian Grand Prix weekend was so good, and Max's speed was so good going into turn one that Max was able to pull to the inside and go straight down the inside and get the lead back for the Grand Prix. Great move, and he did it once again on Lewis Hamilton, but in a bit harder and different fashion once the safety car came in later on. As, of course, Lewis Hamilton defended the inside going down into turn one, and Max Verstappen knew that if he was going to pass Lewis Hamilton, he would have to do it the hard way. Lewis was not going to make this easy for him. So Max, of course, decided to go right round the outside. And this line of going round the outside at turn one and making it the inside for turn two, it can only work if you have most of your car ahead into turn two. So Max knew he had to carry a lot of speed and momentum into turn one and two if he was going to get the lead of the race back. And Lewis Hamilton, you do have to credit him, he did push Max Verstappen to the very edge of what Max can do and forced Max Verstappen to be at his very best if Max Verstappen was going to get the lead back for the Grand Prix. But I have to say, great move it really was by Max Verstappen because you've got to remember Lewis Hamilton, of course, six-time world champion, to go sailing around the outside at a safety car restart at this track at Turn 1 and Turn 2. I cannot explain simply how great that is it's so great for a driver of Max Verstappen's experience to be able to pull off moves like this and make it look a lot easier than it actually is and I can tell you it's not easy at all for a driver like Max Verstappen to do what he did and also behind Alex Albon did the same to Sebastian Vettel as you can see here Albon was practically on the grass as he went down the inside at turn two to get the move done on Sebastian Vettel and he only just got ahead and great move by Albon. But I will say the battles we got between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton in the Grand Prix. I'm hoping next season, if the Red Bull Mercedes is closely matched, I hope we can see this a lot more because as you guys have seen, since Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen have both been in, say, comparable enough cars, when these two go head to head, the battles are truly epic. It's like two gladiators going to war. And I cannot wait, again, if they are in similar enough cars in 2020, to see these two not only battle for race wins and positions, but possibly do this with a world championship on the line. But let's now get on to the next big incident or big incidents of the race. And it is, of course, what happened at Ferrari. Now, of course, Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel made contact with a few laps to go, and it completely destroyed the race for Ferrari. Now, let's look at what happened, what caused the crash, and who was at fault. So, of course, at turn one, Charles Leclerc went down the inside. Fair move. He had definitely 
enough speed into the corner to make it work and he did going into turn one and turn two but on the exit of turn two because Vettel had a better run through turn one and two to get that great exit going into turn three Bastian Vettel was always going to go for a move if he could down to turn four and the straight between turn three and turn four as you can see here he has the DRS and he can absolutely here go for a move but as they now go side by side if they both at this point stay exactly where they are on what parts of the track heading down to turn four i do not believe a crash is go i do not believe a crash would happen because even though they are very close if they had just stayed exactly where they were i don't see how a crash would have happened but of course that's not what happened of course sebastian vettel then decided to move across a bit on Charles Leclerc. And then that caused Charles Leclerc to retire from the race from this damage you can see here. And Sebastian Vettel got a left rear puncture and he retired from the Grand Prix. Now, it is pretty clear, guys, who is at fault. It is Sebastian Vettel who is at fault for this incident. And I'm going to prove why very simply. So as you can see here, Charles Leclerc's on board. He's not leaving a ton of space as we cut to another picture here. You can see Vettel now coming up alongside him. Leclerc is not leaving a ton of space and nor does he really have to at this point. But he's not really doing anything wrong. He's not you know, moving across the track and acting dangerously in terms of positioning of his car. But it is Sebastian Vettel who clearly instigates the contact because again... If they both keep their steering wheels basically straight going towards turn four, I think they just about would have got away with contact. But as you can see from the previous picture, as we go back again, Charles Leclerc had to move more over to the left of the track because Sebastian Vettel is coming over on him to, I guess, take the line going down into turn four. That's then when the contact happened, and that's why both drivers retired from the race now again it is clearly sebastian vettel's fault and it's not the first time we have seen something like this happen because sebastian does have this weird sense of i guess entitlement when it comes to space on track when racing we've seen it in singapore in 2017 turkey in 2010 where he will just move over on his opposition whatever opposition it is that day and whoever he's racing that day, he will just move over like he's entitled to space. That's not how it works. When it comes to racing, you've got to fight and really work hard to get space to make an overtake work. You can't just expect it to you know, come to you and happen. Sebastian Vettel does have, again, a weird sense of entitlement. I will go into more depth when it comes to that later on this week when I finally do my race review, what I mean by that. But... He's done this a couple times before, moving over on people when he thinks there's a lot more space there or he thinks he's entitled to space and it obviously has not worked out and Sebastian was clearly at fault. Some people are saying Charles Leclerc was at fault. I don't really understand how you can say that because what did Charles Leclerc do wrong? He didn't move his steering wheel, basically. I mean, the only time he had to was when Sebastian was coming across on him as Leclerc was trying to avoid contact but rightfully was not giving Sebastian tons of space because they were racing hard for position and he didn't have to. So for me, clearly, Sebastian Vettel is at fault. And the final thing we'll analyse is Lewis Hamilton coming to blows of Alex Albon on, I believe, the penultimate lap of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, Lewis Hamilton actually got a five-second time penalty for this. Now, I disagree. I do not believe it was a five second time penalty. I don't think Lewis Hamilton was at fault. He did admit it was his fault, but I don't actually think it was. I think it was a, a pretty clear racing incident, and I'm going to show why. So, down into this corner, Lewis Hamilton at this point, you have to say, has enough of his car alongside to deserve space, but because of the way the corner is, it's an uphill. And then it goes to a downhill slope as you go towards the final couple corners. But Albon, he can't really see Lewis Hamilton that well in his mirrors. So Albon is not exactly sure, because of the way the corner is and the elevation is, he's not exactly sure where Lewis Hamilton is. So because of that, 
Albon then, of course, turns in. And Lewis Hamilton makes contact with Albon. But because Lewis Hamilton did have, for me, enough space at the inside and enough of his car at the inside to deserve space, but also because Albon clearly was not able to see Hamilton properly in his mirrors, that is why, for me, it is a racing incident. Because I don't really think the two drivers, given the circumstances of the situation, could have really done anything different. It's just one of those things... Lewis Hamilton, you know, going for second place to try and catch Max Verstappen. Alex Albon trying to defend a bit, I guess, into this corner to keep his second place. It's just one of those things that happens in racing. But guys, before I go, I just want to update you guys as to the plan of content for the rest of the week. So this is coming out on Monday at 12pm. Um, and then, hopefully... If my internet properly comes back at the earliest on Wednesday, then I will be streaming on Wednesday night where I will do my full live review basically of the weekend. But if it doesn't come back on Wednesday and it comes back on, let's say, Thursday or Friday, then that night, I guess, I will do a live stream where I am going to properly review and catch up on the action that, of course, we missed together with the whole weekend, where, of course, normally. I do do uh, watch-alongs and reviews and stuff like that. So I will get caught up soon. I, I absolutely can guarantee that. Soon before the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, I will get caught up with you guys as to what happened in the Grand Prix. And also, I do have another video coming that was actually planned before this race, which is a comparison video. And I know you guys love the comparison videos. It's a comparison video of Charles Leclerc versus Sebastian Vettel again. This is not because of the Brazilian Grand Prix and the contact that happened between Leclerc and Vettel. It has been planned this video for about a month. And what I'm going to do basically is compare the two drivers and look at, over the course of the season, who has been the better driver in 2019. So that is the plan for the rest of the week. If I do get my internet back by, say... I don't know, the latest by Friday. That is the plan. And the next week, of course, we'll build towards and do the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix weekend. But guys, make sure to comment down below what you thought of this video and what you thought of my opinion of what happened in these certain crashes and overtakes during the 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And also, don't forget to hit the like button as well for more content like this. And until next time, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.